Today on Made to Hack, I solder my reflow. I did some Black Friday shopping, maybe even went a little overboard. Went up on the uh, good old uh, AliExpress to see what kind of deals they had. Bit of a sneak peek, something else I also picked up this Black Friday. I think it might be upside down. I wonder how I didn't notice that. We have a Yehua 2-in-1 thermostatic soldering station hot air rework station. Essentially what I have here is you take a soldering iron, you take a hot air gun, you stick them together and you make up one of these units all in one. Okay, now uh, if you don't know the brand Yehua, it's sort of maybe like a Aten. They essentially do copies of like Heiko stations and uh, you know maybe they're a little bit better quality all right so Whew. two in one anti-static rework and soldering station instruction manual 8786d okay that's an 858 clone and that's a, it's a 888d the certificate card Ooh. I picked this kit up, I think it was 65 uh, US Freedom Bucks. And it comes with a bit of soldering wire. And it's a, uh, it's leaded, 63 tin, 37 lead, good stuff. Comes with a replacement heater cartridge. One of these cheesy uh, solder, uh, you know, like uh, sucker tools. Some of these plastic, I guess, um, you know, to take apart phones and tablets. Another replacement uh, heating element for, I guess this would be for the, uh, the soldering iron. Test leads, I guess. Five soldering tips and just the tips. Here's the soldering iron itself and uh, looks like it already has a tip. Good stuff. Right, the uh, various hot air rework tips. Here's the unit. The stand, a pair of uh, tweezers and repair assistive tools. These look interesting. Anything else? No, that is good. That's all in the package. Okay, so this is the unit 8786D 2-in-1. So you've got SMD rework, that's the hot air bit here and the soldering bit. This would be the temperature, cool hot, and the air speed, power button for the hot air, power button for the soldering iron also comes with this uh, metal stand that you could, uh, I guess, uh, put up here or just keep it on the side as well. Maybe there's some mounting screws. You gotta check that out. Sort of a flexible uh, bit. Uh, nothing written on this cable to see if it's silicone or not. The reason I chose this model, first off the bat, the relatively more ergonomic uh, handle compared to this uh, older style uh, hot air reflow with the more pronounced edges. They seem to have uh, kind of made it uh, just integrate better in the hand. Now the unit itself is, uh, it's a 740 watt rated, okay. And it's also got a power button at the back and a fuse holder, I assume. Seems to be a fuse holder. This is the soldering iron tip from my Heiko. And this is the soldering iron tip from uh, this Yehua. So it's uh, supposed to be, I guess, a um, copy of the Heiko. So this opens up as here. Remove the tip. Same thing on my Heiko. Heating elements are almost at the same level. The Heiko one seems to be ceramic here. This one, well, it seems metallic on first look, but it's also got a ceramic on the inside. So I guess the tips are technically interchangeable for Heiko, maybe. Let me, let's see this Heiko tip on it. Yeah, it seems to work. Now, uh, the Heiko has this uh, 
sort of rubber. Granted, it's you know quite dirty after all these years of use. And this seems to have some overmold as well. At first glance, the Heiko is a little more ergonomic. This one's a little more rougher. Um, in terms of weight, this one seems a lot lighter. The Heiko seems a little bit heavier. Aside from that, same uh, uh, probably lead as the Heiko. Uh, yeah, same pin configuration, except it's the other way around. The Heiko uh, gets plugged in, and this one should have... Uh, it's the reverse. Okay, the, the wire for this one, the Heiko, is a lot more flexible. It seems more silicone-y. This doesn't quite seem as silicone like I think it might not be silicone okay and this will plug into the front here and we'll screw in and put in the stand as such here are the differences in between the um, my old uh, hot air station and this new one just by weight, well, it seems similar. Both of them have this uh, holder that you can uh, unscrew and position either on the left hand side or the right hand side. The hotter tips are similar, as I mentioned, this is a lot more ergonomic and it's got some strain relief here as well. This one doesn't, and uh, over the years, it's starting to fall apart. In terms of diameter, they are quite similar. This one also unscrews like this one. It probably disassembles from here. Okay, so uh, again, similar dial. It's just a one turn pot. Nothing more precise than that. Power button, power button obviously. And this, of course, you can uh, use the screws on top to mount the soldering iron and have it uh, top mounted like such. So I'm gonna plug it in and we'll get it turned on. Okay, I've got it set up, plugged in. I've screwed the uh, uh, soldering iron holder to the top. I'm gonna throw in this little cheesy uh, sponge and get that wet. Watch as it uh, absorbs that water. I will probably change it out and maybe get like a brass insert like on my Heiko here just so you know it's a lot more convenient. So I threw on the medium uh, hot air tip. These are the ones with the screw on types versus my old style which was just uh, you know there weren't screw on you would uh, twist them on. They'd have this groove sort of on the inside. I guess these might be easier to remove. All right, so once again, it's got a power switch at the back, which I'll turn on. Okay, <clears throat> so it's showing us nothing here. So we'll turn the hot air side on first. So it's preset to 300, I would assume degrees Celsius. Okay, so if we take it off, it starts to go off. And then I guess this is the, the speed of the controller. Yep, we throw it back on. It should detect that it's there and start the cool down process. Okay, if I turn down the speed of the fan. And throw it back on. It might take a little bit longer to cool. And then if under 100 degrees Celsius, it'll turn off. Now, if I press the uh, cool hot, I'm going to try to press this, see if that does anything. Okay, so it turns off the heat and the fan keeps going. So I guess that's just residual heat. We'll see how uh, low it goes. Okay, so then it could even go under 100 degrees Celsius. Obviously, it doesn't turn off, and 
I guess one it'll it'll just keep going cooler and cooler it's just uh, you know like it just blows in air yep and so it's now just cool I guess it's it no longer measures and then if I go hot again it'll start boosting back up the temperature to the preset to 300 so if we hold this it goes pretty quick I mean it's fast to it set a new temperature okay okay and it ramps this was good because on the old one it was really slow to change the temperature and then now it's just ramping down so I'm going to put that there okay so that's cooled off I'm going to turn on the uh, the hot air station uh, I'm going to actually change the tip on the iron and uh, I'm going to find a chisel tip yeah about a two three millimeter chisel tip is what I prefer to use seems to be tinned and we'll find this out once we turn it on see what temperature it's preset to so it's preset to 300 celsius as well So it should be warming up. I'm not gonna touch the tip on this one, but it feels warmer. Let's see if the soldering is flowing yet. The solder is not yet flowing. I'm also, I also have let it solder here. Okay, so at 300 it hasn't uh, flowed either the solder on it. So let's move that up to 350 degrees C. Okay, so now, yeah, here it's uh, it's flowing, so we're good on 350 degrees C. I'm just gonna grab this little. I like the uh, the brass better than the sponge, so I'm just gonna retin it. It's, it's nice at 350 C. It flows well. Okay, I'm gonna try to put it here and see if anything happens. Yeah, no, so it just keeps the heat, I guess. Okay. Uh, I thought I read somewhere that it has like a uh, holding temperature. Let me see if, uh, if I hit the cold hot. No, nothing happens on the solder iron. It doesn't seem to anyway. So it'll just stay at whatever temperature that you've set it to. Okay, what I've got set up here are three thermocouples and two of them go to this uh, thermometer. They're about 20 degrees C and one of them goes to my multimeter 19 degrees C. So we're maybe a, a degree C apart. Again, that doesn't have a, a resolution less than a degree and this is, uh, you know, less than a degree. So we're in the ballpark. I'm going to take the tip just hold it here and go up to the 300 degrees and see I don't know tip distance maybe uh, one inch two and a half centimeters so we'll turn it on a little ramp up to 300 and we'll see what kind of readings we get so essentially what is going on here I had a rather long-winded uh, explanation trying to determine the difference between the th temperature shown on the display and the heat coming out of the tip of the hot air soldering station and I've got uh, three thermocouples on, in two devices. One is a thermometer, the other one is a multimeter. There was a little bit of a discrepancy on the thermometer. However, what was uh, relevant is the fact that we're looking at about 20 to 30 degree centigrade overshoot uh, on the air that comes out of uh, the hot air end and what's shown on the screen. So. That's sort of the conclusion that I come up with. 
Obviously, this is not at all scientific, so don't rely on my temperature readings uh, as a, the true temperature that uh, the hot air is coming out of at the tip. Yeah, so they're over 200, about 20 degrees overshoot again. Again, 20 degree overshoot again. You know, of course, this is uh, about as precise as, uh, well, you know, this. Um, I'm not going to test the tip of the iron since technically that requires one of those tip testers with like a Kelvin compensated something or other, maybe. I don't know. Or maybe I'm just making stuff up. But anyway, I mean, if, if the overshoot is 20 degrees C on the hot air, it's not like huge. Um, you know, it might be for some sensitive parts, but again, you're not uh, really doing any sensitive work on this. Okay, so just a you know, quick conclusion. What do you get for $65 plus $7 shipping? That's $72. Well, let's take a look. I paid over $100 for this Heiko years ago, and then I paid another $30 for, to change the transformer so it worked in, uh, here in Europe. I paid about $70 for just a hot air station, again, a no-name, Baku, whatever. So to combine these for less than half the price of both of those separate items now, $65, it's pretty affordable. Um, you know, is it as professional at, uh, an iron as the Heiko? Probably not. In terms of the hot air, I'm sure it's just as good as this Baku or Aten or equivalent. Uh, there's even cheaper units in the $30 range. but. Again, Yehua is like one of those Aten slash brands that are, you know, they copy the, the, the Heiko manufacturers and others, and they do a pretty decent job, I suppose, of it. But if you're just getting into an electronics as a hobby, um, 65 bucks plus seven bucks shipping, it's super cheap. So, and you get both a hot air and, a, and an iron, you know. So yeah, we'll, uh, maybe we'll do another video in the future of changing things around and maybe installing it somewhere. Hey, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Also, make sure to turn on notifications to receive updates whenever I post a new video. If you like what you saw, hit that like button as well.